Good morning. It is November 28th on uh, a Tuesday here. It is Taco Tuesday. Hopefully everyone has recovered from your uh, turkey comas and are ready to learn about some of our uh, uh, vendor resources here from Will. So my name is Jeff Bruner and welcome to Taco Tuesday. We are joined today. Uh, we'll, we're actually going to end up having three presenters today. We had to have someone drop out, but we've got three folks lined up to talk to you today. First on that list, joining us from World Trade Press is Alex Gardner. Alex, are you ready to take over? Oh, yes, Jeff. Yes, I'm all set. All right. I'm going to stop sharing my screen and then it'll be all yours. Great. Um, so, yes. So, as uh, Jeff mentioned, my name is Alex Gardner with World Trade Press. Uh, we publish a series of resources for uh, academic and public libraries. And uh, in line with the post Thanksgiving holiday, I will be sharing a product of ours on cuisine uh, titled A to Z World Food. So if I, so A to Z World Food is a comprehensive database featuring 174 different countries. Um, this is a database that provides you with uh, traditional recipes and you can select a country via the map or the drop-down list corresponding to the right. Uh, this is a database that provides patrons a wide breadth into world culinary options, as well as allowing uh, public libraries and academic institutions the ability to supplement their cookbook and recipe book sections. Uh, this is a database that includes over 1,400 um, food culture articles, as well as over 7,000 recipes and over 650 ingredient articles, all of which uh, we will be exploring briefly in the demonstration today. Uh, so as you can see with the select a country via uh, the map feature, I'm just going to go ahead and click on France. And with France, you can see that we have a uh, food culture, beverages, and recipes page. Uh, to start off with, food culture offers you a national cuisine article, uh, kind of an overview here into French cooking. Uh, as well as a number of corresponding fair use images, as you can see over in the right-hand column. Uh, the regional cuisine section uh, provides you with a nice overview here into uh, French culinary uh, information with a regional map, uh, along with a breakdown into some of the different culinary regions throughout France, including some information on Paris, Burgundy, Provence, and some of their staple dishes. Uh, you can also see a classic dishes menu, uh, which provides you with a hyperlinked course menu into a few of the many different dishes associated with French cuisine. Each uh, recipe is uh, hyperlinked to include the option to link down to the recipe section at the bottom. And this also features once again, a number of nice looking images to the right, which puts a nice illustration and face to the resource. Also included within food culture are a couple of articles that are available for any students who might be doing some research into French uh, food culture, uh, providing you with some information on daily meals in France, uh, which can be useful for any patrons who might be visiting a given country, uh, as well as some common decorum around dining etiquette um, with uh, French table etiquette and the social dimension of dining at mealtimes, uh, whether out at a restaurant or a um, family occasion for a holiday, as well as a glimpse here into special occasion foods where you can look at some French traditions surrounding the Christmas holiday, uh, New Year's Eve, and some other national or religious traditions. The beverages section contains uh, some information here into French tea culture. Uh, so you can learn about the history of French adoption of tea in Europe, along with uh, some information in here into imports and cultivation and different varieties enjoyed by French tea drinkers and some traditions for how it may be enjoyed in the late afternoon or evening. Uh, also included here uh, is an article for national beers uh, which allows patrons to explore some information into 
um, French ales and um, different lagers and style alcohol content, along with a description and some of the major brewers uh, throughout regions of France. And really the heart of the database is going to be found within the recipes section. So you'll notice here that we've got a selection of eight different categories for recipes, starting with appetizers all the way down to snacks. Uh, and this will be your library's cookbook or recipe book, so to speak, for French dishes. If we were to go to main courses, you'll notice here that we have a pictorial menu in our center. Uh, so a number of different available dishes in here. And for example, if we were to click on uh, the scallops poached with wine and cream dish, this is the view. This is how it's going to look for patrons, whether accessing this uh, in the library or remotely. Um, so this comes with a few introductory sentences describing uh, the poached scallops dish, along with a nice enlargeable image over to the right. You've also got your prep and cook time graphics, which displays really well on a tablet or mobile device. Uh, so it shows your patrons how, it, uh, how long it takes to prepare and or cook your servings, along with corresponding dietary options. If vegetarianism or veganism or any of these options are applicable, uh, you'll see them uh, with the square on the left-hand side corresponding checked off. Uh, you also have the ability to do some manual inventory with your recipes and directions. Uh, so as you can see here, each ingredient can be marked off as patrons are going through the process of collecting these ingredients at the store or assembling them on the kitchen counter prior to cooking, uh, as well as the ability to highlight each numeric direction as you go through the process of preparing and serving your dish. Uh, you've also got the share and print functions. Uh, share allows you uh, to actually send the recipe listing out to a friend uh, via email. So um, you have the ability to send this out to a friend or relative, perhaps somebody outside of your own community. You'll also notice that many of the ingredients are hyperlinked, and that's because we do have a section of 650 ingredient articles, as I indicated at the, uh, in the introduction. So for example, if you were to click on lemon, uh, you'll notice that this gives you an article here for lemon as a fruit under ingredient categories. Uh, so this gives you a nice overview article of lemons along with some imagery. And then at the bottom, um, you've also got some information in here on um, spices for any uh, libraries that do promote or entertain cookbook clubs or spice clubs. This gives you an A through Z listing of all the different spices that we have available, everything from allspice down to wasabi or sitar. And if we were to click, for example, on allspice, this gives you uh, once again an article uh, along with the ability to share and print the information. And then uh, to show you briefly some information here on reference topics, we've got a number of categories contained here within reference, including some information on uh, beers, coffees, teas, wines, among others. Uh, for example, if we were to open up coffee, you'll notice that this gives us a, uh, sorry, a glossary section here of coffee related terms an A through Z alphabetical directory. Uh, which you can browse through or search for. Um, you've also got a historical timeline providing you with some information into the early discovery and cultivation of coffee from medieval period all the way down to more contemporary uh, historical events. And you've also got a series of coffee and tea quotations. So some fun references here to coffees and teas from some famous names, as you can see with uh, former President Lincoln, Charles Dickens, Ernest Hemingway, among others. And as you can see, each one of these sections in here has uh, food quotes, glossaries, and historical timelines with uh, that given category, in this case, coffee umbrellaed underneath uh, a number of different terms. So um, also available, you've got a category titled how food is made. 
And this provides uh, patrons with a wealth of seven different subsets of videos that were produced in-house with the assistance of some of our local culinary instructors. Uh, each video comes with a runtime along with a side-by-side -side transcript, which spells out the process uh, a little bit better for the patron. And I will just allow this to play for a few seconds. Blanching is the process in which vegetables are scalded with boiling water or steam to help retain color, flavor, and nutrients. Bring a pot of salted water to a boil, then add the vegetables. So you can boil see the, uh, the basic process there. And so this gives you a, uh, an idea of how the reference guide is going to be laid out. And a couple of housekeeping measures that I just wanted to briefly touch upon in closing is uh, you'll see here at the bottom of the menu that you have a Cite This Document tab. Uh, this allows any student patrons who might be utilizing this for uh, research into a classroom project or a presentation, the ability to cite each one of these pages in major citation formats, including APA, MLA Handbook, and Chicago Manual style uh, for their bibliographies. And lastly, I just wanted to kind of briefly touch upon the product brochure. If you scroll down to the footer of the database and click on the link here, uh, you'll notice that this gives you a seven page brochure for A to Z world food. And if you notice some of the different uh, outlines and images and illustrations being employed here, uh, we've got all of the same information condensed down into our marketing and promotional materials. Uh, so your libraries uh, as part of wills will have access to um, bookmarks, posters, trifolds, mouse pads, website logos, uh, a nice um, series of different promotional materials that they can utilize both within their library as well as uh, on their websites or any social media like Facebook and Instagram that they may employ as well. Um, so that's kind of the product in a nutshell. This is a database that we have available for uh, any wills, public and academic libraries that want to provide uh, their library patrons with the benefit of world culinary options with 174 countries covered, as well as the ability to augment or supplement some of their print expenditures uh, within their library shelves as well. So um, that's kind of the, uh, the product and that's my close. Thanks so much, Alex. What a cool resource. I, I'm actually... I'm not sure if I've ever seen it demoed before, so um, I'm I'm really excited by all the features in the uh, in the product. I didn't, I guess I didn't realize there was it was quite so fully featured. So that's really cool. I can see how useful that would be in a in a whole host of settings. Oh, absolutely, and you know, particularly uh, the ability to market and promote this product. A lot of patrons have. Um, especially from the outset of the pandemic into more of a kind of remote setting have voiced their benefit with being able to look up kind of a whole host of, you know, over 7,000 recipes on the go if they're looking for a holiday meal or just some occasion to have, you know, a family weekend and then the ability to, of course, market this to students who might be doing some world culture projects. And uh, it, it just, it appeals to a wide, you know, diverse setting of library patrons who may otherwise not know, you know, information on France or one of the 174 countries that they're looking at. Super cool. Really, really a, a great resource. I'm, I'm really glad that uh, you've been able to show it off to us today. Oh, thank you, Jeff. Absolutely. All right. Well, we, uh, we're going to uh, get ready to move uh, on to our next presenter, but thank you again, Alex, and, and thanks to everyone else for uh, joining us today to learn about A to Z world food. Um, and we will have a little bit more information um, in our follow-up message, including contact information for Alex and, and uh, so forth. So thanks again. Absolutely. Thank you, Jeff. All right. I'm going to share my screen again just to get us set up for our next presenter.
So joining us next for uh, Taco Tuesday is Paula Roman, who comes to us from Canopy. Paula, are you ready to sort of take over and, and uh, show us something from Canopy? Yeah, good morning, Jeff. How are you? Yes, I absolutely am. And I echo Alex. That was a very, very cool product. I, I got to catch the, the tail end of that presentation. So I was definitely interested myself. <laughs> yeah, agreed. Very, very neat. All right. Well, I'm going to stop sharing my screen so that you okay. can uh, take the reins, Paula. Super. Thank you. I will do the slideshow from the beginning. All right. Again, thank you so much, uh, Jeff and everyone on the call today. My name is Paula Roman. I'm a team lead with Canopy Public Libraries. A lot of this information or most of this information is for public libraries, but if there's anyone on the call or anyone who, who watches today that is interested uh, in the academic Canopy resource, you can also please reach out to me directly and I'll make sure that someone um, gets in touch with you very, very quickly. So a little bit about Canopy. Uh, we really are the best of a moving image from around the world. We're a streaming video resource through OverDrive. And we have over 30,000 films and television shows from over 1,100 distribution partners, um, over 125 new, sorry, let me move this again. This isn't working. Uh, hold on one second. Okay, there we go. Um, let me move one second, little, little issues here. We release over 125 new films and TV shows every week. And globally, over 50% of what is on Canopy is exclusive to Canopy. Now, some of our key content partners are The Great Courses, IFC Films, PBS, some of the ones listed below, including MGM, Warner Brothers, BBC is a brand new one for us, and um, we have pretty much everything uh, that all of your patrons could ever want, even some great TV from um, A&E and the History Channel and much, much more. Some of the more popular films on Canopy in 2023 include the, uh, the Academy Award winner, Everything, Everywhere, All at Once, which has been incredibly popular. Triangle of Sadness, Mr. Malcolm's List from BBC, Learning to Drive, The Mercy, and Kubrick Kubrick. Those are kind of just an overview or sampling of some of the more popular films on Canopy and TV shows in 2023. And then The Great Courses. We have every Great Courses course that is available for public libraries. Um, and really anything that someone wants to learn from ancient Egypt to the Renaissance to cooking across the ages and much more. We do have every great courses course available to public libraries. And then there's Canopy Kids. Canopy Kids includes over 2000 films and TV shows that support uh, early literacy, STEM skills, empathy, critical thinking, and other important topics. We have uh, the Canopy Kids program both available in pay-per-use and unlimited use subscriptions now. So that is something new for this year um, is going to be the unlimited use subscription. And you can find us in Libby. Now you can't watch the films in Libby, but if your patrons uh, have opened up the Libby app and they search in the extras section of their homepage, if you have Canopy, they'll find Canopy there. They can click on it and then it will prompt them to open the Canopy um, resource and create an account right then and there. So you can discover, your patients can discover Canopy inside of Libby. As far as where they would watch the films on Canopy, um, any place that they would find Stars or Hulu or Netflix or any of the pay for streaming services, they would find Canopy in the same place. So for example, Apple TV, Roku, Chromecast, Samsung, Fire TV, and Android TV are going to be some of the places that the, that the Canopy app is available on television. And patrons who are really good with their remote control can go ahead and create an account right then and there inside of the Canopy app on TV. If they are interested in watching on a phone, tablet, or mobile device, the Canopy app is available on iPhone, iPad, Android, and Fire Tablet. 
Okay, so um, the Canopy app is available in lots of different places. And also, if they would like to watch on their uh, laptop, they would use the web or the URL that you would place on your website. They can create an account there and watch right away. Making, uh, making Canopy available to your community. There are really two ways to come on board with Canopy now where we used to just have our flagship pay-per-use program of over 30,000 films and TV shows. We also now have something called Canopy Plus. Canopy Plus are what I would call mini subscriptions of anywhere between 150 and 350 television shows and films. There are six of them currently available and I'll go uh, over those in just a moment. But if you are interested in just picking some Canopy Plus packs, as we call them, unlimited subscriptions, they are a flat yearly fee, okay? But first let's talk about pay-per-use. The pay-per-use program, again, gives your patrons unlimited access to over 30,000 films and TV shows. On the right here, this shows a film page on a phone of what patrons would see. We would work together to provide, um, I could provide an estimated usage cost and speak with you about a monthly ticket allotment provided, uh, can be provided by your local Canopy account, which would be me in this particular instance. You can set monthly or annual budget limits and decide how many tickets to offer each month. So we would work through that together. Um, the Canopy Kids portion which is its own universe inside of Canopy, does not use tickets. Instead, it is a 30-day all-access pass. Once your patrons check out a film, they would have access for 30 rolling days, um, and they can watch as many films and TV shows as they want to. So the end-of-the-year promotion that I wanted to talk about, it's very exciting. If you are able to come on board with a Canopy pay-per-use program uh, on or before uh, December 22nd, 2023, and then receive your launch email with live link on or before January 15th, 2024, you will get your first full month free, okay? So any of the usage from your patrons in the first month is free of charge. If you are interested in getting a quote, um, an estimate on a pay-per-use program for your library, you can reach out to me directly at proman at overdrive.com and I can get you a price uh, estimate there, okay? Moving on to Canopy Plus. Um, and by the way, while I am in uh, this mode, I'm not able to see if there are any questions uh, that have come in. So Jeff, if there are any, feel free to, to stop me uh, at any time and, and ask if there are, ask any questions because I'm not able to see it in the chat. Sure thing, Paula. Thanks. Uh, Canopy Plus, again, as mentioned before, these are unlimited access yearly subscriptions. Right now, we have six of them, and they are all themed. And again, they're between, I would say, more like 150 to 350 titles. The themed paths that are available are Canopy Favorites, Easy Watching, World Cinema, Diversity, British Cinema and TV, and Episodic Series Content. The cost for each plus pack uh, is based on the library's total annual circulation of all materials. And each plus pack is a once, once upfront cost per year. So it is a flat fee for unlimited access, no tickets needed um, for the titles in those packs. Um, the Canopy Kids subscription, again, is new and is available at the same cost as a plus pack, but there are over 2,400 films and TV shows in the Canopy Kids subscription, okay? All you can eat subscription. To get Canopy Kids, all you would need is either one adult Canopy Plus pack or the pay-per-use program. So you would need to have some adult content to launch Canopy Kids, uh, the Canopy Kids subscription. And more Canopy Plus packs are definitely in development for the future. Now, a little bit about Canopy Favorites. Canopy Favorites are going to be literally those favorite films that, that patrons just keep coming back to over the years with Canopy. So it's kind of like a best of collection. Easy Watching are going to be those feel good films, you know, crack open a, a bottle of wine or just, you know, nice Tuesday, Wednesday 
evening feel-good films from Canopy. And world cinema are going to be the best of world cinema, as mentioned, uh, from diverse filmmakers from around the world, also in different languages, closed caption in English. And then our diversity collection is uh, a wonderful collection that focuses on diverse stories, storytellers, um, directors, and subject matters. And last but not least, British TV and series is mostly BBC, but also some content from PBS and other content partners. Episodic TV is going to be bingeable narrative and documentary TV shows. So those are all six of our um, plus packs. We also have wonderful free marketing resources for libraries to be able to um, get the word out about Canopy to your patrons, whether it's on your website, or your social media, or anywhere else that you would like to get the word out again about Canopy, and they're all free for public libraries and academic libraries. If you are interested in finding out more about uh, the marketing resources, you can check out uh, the U U.S. Resource Center, Canadian, obviously we don't need for this um, presentation today, but if you're interested in getting more information about Canopy marketing materials, you'll want to scan um, this QR code for visit our U.S. Resource Center. And then if you'd like to learn more about Canopy, there are a few things you can do. You can either reach out to me directly at pRoman at overdrive.com. That's pRoman at overdrive.com. Or you can scan the QR code over here on the left. If you are interested in receiving Canopy emails with information about upcoming content, town hall meetings, um, anything else that has to do with Canopy, please go ahead and scan the QR code on the right for Canopy emails. And I think I just kind of came in a little bit under at two minutes. So just wanted to thank you for this uh, opportunity to give you a brief overview about Canopy. Again, if you'd like more information or you have questions, you can reach out at pRoman at overdrive.com and I am happy to help in any way. Thank you, Jeff. Thanks, everyone. Thank you, Paula. Great presentation. Um, uh, and you're right, right on time. Um, we've got a, a mixed group of uh, attendees today. We did have one question about Canopy come in. It came from one of our academic libraries. Um, so I, I think the right move there is for me to put that person in touch with Haley Block, who works with our academics. Do you think that's right? That would be fine. That would be great as well. Yes, because okay. I would send it directly to Haley too. <laughs> right. <laughs> All right. Well, that's what we'll do. We'll make sure that, um, that uh, Haley uh, can uh, touch base with... Um, with Val, who's who's uh, at one of our tech colleges. Perfect. But uh, anyone else, if you do have any questions for Paula, uh, or if you're watching this uh, recording after the fact, or think of something later, feel free to reach out to us here at Wills, reach out to Paula directly, um, and we'll get you taken care of. Thanks again, Paula. Thank you. Have a great rest of your day. Thanks, you too. Okay, let me share my screen one more time just to get us all set up for our last presenter. Joining us today from, uh, well, from DPI, but to talk to us about BadgerLink is Jen Shampoo. Jen, I'm so excited to see you. Welcome. Thank you. I'm excited to see you too, Jeff, and be here. Thanks so much for inviting, inviting um, BadgerLink into the Taco Tuesday conversation. <laughs> it's my it's um, my pleasure. Let me let me stop sharing my screen. Sure. And I, I'm sure you've got a lot to cover. I'm going to let you take the reins and 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 show us some cool stuff here. Thank you. I do. You know me very well. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right. So, am I sharing my um, slideshow here? My yep. Slide we deck? can see Badger okay. Link for library staff. Great. Perfect. All right. Well. Um, hello, all. As I, as Jeff said, I am Jen Shampoo. Um, I am BadgerLink trainer. Uh, I work at DPI on BadgerLink, mostly in providing training and communications on BadgerLink resources. So from personal interest to educational research, BadgerLink is Wisconsin's online library, providing Wisconsin residents with a collection of licensed, trustworthy databases and online resources. 
The resources are designed to provide a foundational collection serving all Wisconsin residents, augmenting those available through K-12 schools, public libraries, public and private universities and technical colleges, medical and healthcare facilities, and state agencies. So this collection of resources is already available to all Wisconsin residents and because it's purchased with state funding, it's free to use and share at your libraries already. The collection is meant to span the lifelong learning needs of Wisconsin residents. So a fourth grade student can use Britannica School or Explora from EBSCO to complete a school project while their parent can access current issues of the New York Times in ProQuest U.S. Newsstream or their local newspaper in Wisconsin Newspaper Association's Archive of Wisconsin Newspapers. A new homeowner can use Consumer Reports Magazine and Buying Guide in EBSCO's Master File Complete to compare refrigerators, while someone new to Wisconsin can prepare for the GED citizenship test or a change in careers with Learning Express Library. The entire collection of over 60 resources is available to access and share from the BadgerLink website at badgerlink.dpi.wi.gov. Because the BadgerLink website houses the entire BadgerLink collection, it mirrors the fact that the collection serves everyone. The homepage provides top resource buttons that allow folks to self-select what type of resources they are seeking out. And the resource page provides filters by format, subject, audience, and content provider to narrow down results from the A to Z listing. But we understand that you have library users with specific research needs, and they might not be seeing themselves on the BadgerLink website or can't find that particular resource they need at a glance. You can provide better context for your community's needs, um, more so than the BadgerLink website may be able to. So to help you do that efficiently and effectively, we've created an entire web page to house the tools and materials you need as library staff. And I should mention that this these materials are all also free um, to use and readily available from the BadgerLink website on the Four Library Staff page. Um, and you can find the link to the Four Library Staff page on the BadgerLink website in this top dark blue bar um, where it says Four Library Staff. So this page has five sections, including getting started, resource guides, marketing the resources, training materials, and for the classroom. You can also find links to our bulletin newsletter um, on all things BadgerLink, including resource highlights, user stories, and training opportunities. The contact us form is um, also front and center to reach out to us at any time. And there's a request training form so that you can ask for personalized training on any of the BadgerLink resources at your library for your staff and colleagues at any time. I'm gonna spend the rest of the time briefly going through the remaining sections and what may be of interest in each. So the first section is called Getting Started. This section has quite a bit about providing access to users, especially through the direct links to resources Google Sheet. You'll also find the BadgerLink collection development policy um, that here that may be especially useful in uh, these difficult times with challenges to resources nationwide popping up all the time. We encourage you to review this policy on the statewide collection of online resources and databases and link to and share alongside your own library's policies to the collections you develop and purchase yourselves uh, when deemed appropriate. There's also a link to subscribe to Bulletin found under Getting Started, uh, again, to have those newsletter posts landing in your inbox and keeping those BadgerLink resources at the top of mind. In the resource guide section of the Four Library staff page, multiple resource guides are provided to um, better for you to better understand the resources themselves and their uses by audience or information need. The resources listed on the guides are considered best bets based on recommendations from the vendors, 
overall usage patterns and advice from the field. There are guides for all types of libraries and library staff. I'm gonna now review quickly some of the resource guides in more detail and start with the K-12 grade level guides broken down for elementary, middle, and high school. Reminder that as I talk about all these resource guides, they are all found on the Badgerlink for library staff page under the resource guide section. So the elementary guide focuses on key resources like Britannica Fundamentals for grades kindergarten through second, Britannica School, and Britannica Escolar, the Spanish language version geared specifically for these grades. Another key resource for, um, for elementary students is Explora for Elementary Schools from EBSCO, which provides a more graphical interface than the standard EBSCO host databases and includes content for younger students, including age-appropriate text complexity and interest areas. Um, options for middle, middle, I'm sorry, middle, middle school students are also include uh, grade level specific Britannica School and the Spanish language Escolar, uh, as well as EBSCO offerings like Explora, Novelist K8, and the magazine database Middle Search Plus. The high school resource guide um, is provided to the BadgerLink resources best suited to high school students will provide a guide um, foundation for future schooling or careers. So again, Britannica School available in English and Spanish is highlighted, um, EBSCO's Explora, the magazine database Mass Complete, and subject specific reference centers for history, literature, and science. There's also um, college admissions test preparation from Learning Access Express Library. So a lot um, of content in the high school resource guide. In addition to school library specific guides, there are a few resource guides created especially for public library staff. Um, the public library guide here in the center focuses on seven main categories that appeal to the general adult population, including auto and engine repair, genealogy, health and wellness, newspapers, reading and literacy, reference and research, and test preparation and skill building. The Youth Re um, Services Resource Guide lists BadgerLink resources suited to public librarians working with youth, particularly those resources in BadgerLink for programming and keeping up with professional learning. The Homework Help Resource Guide contains best bet resources for helping young library users with their homework after school at the library. Um, those resources are also um, noted to broken out by the similar topical areas as the Public Library Resource Guide, um, but they're for students of all ages to assist them with research assignments and are hopefully helpful to share um, with students at the reference desk or for your library staff to use for narrowing resources to include in after school programming. Um, there are also a couple guides for academic librarians working in institutes of higher education. The Educators Professional Learning Resource Guide um, includes multiple EBSCO resources, which contain full text journals relating to all areas of education, such as curriculum and instruction, administration, policy, funding, and related social issues. They are all easily uh, searchable individually or through um, Explora Educators Edition up here at the top. And similarly, the Health Resource Guide lists all five health-related resources um, in the BadgerLink collection for the average consumer to the nursing student and medical professional. And while they're all available um, also from the health, EBSCO Health Resources link. There are also guides for you as a librarian. The Collection Development Resource Guide calls out resources that include book reviews and collection analysis reporting tools and reader's advisory from BadgerLink Resources core collections, novelist, and teaching books. The Spanish language guide is a guide where all the resources where content is in Spanish are listed in one place. So you can easily share reference to these resources with your Spanish speaking community users. 
Of course, these resource guides are not the end all be all of BadgerLink resources of use to library staff in school, public or academic libraries, but by definition are meant to um, guide or to narrow down the options since we've heard that both end users and staff get overwhelmed when confronted with the BadgerLink all resources page. Um, they may not understand what's available or they're not using the resources to their fullest potential. So these guides were developed to use as a reference point when selecting which resources are more appropriate, most appropriate for your user group. Part of this empowerment is utilizing what you have already. So please use these guides as a tool to then post the direct resource links to your own library's website. Or if you have a school that uses it, or if you are at a school that uses a single sign on product like Classlink or Clever, ask us for the alternative setup info you'll need to properly integrate the resources into these platforms you're already directing your library users to. You could also post the guide itself on your website in, the, in lieu of a list of links, or you could print it out to share with folks that are in the library. So I'm going to quickly go through the um, last two um, sections of the For Library Staff page. Once you have the resources on your website, you can continue to market them with posters and bookmarks in print at your library or in classrooms. The Marketing the Resources section on the For Library Staff page is where you'll find posters and bookmarks to request be shipped to your library free of charge. Um, currently, many of the themes of the bookmarks and posters are general, such as get caught reading, or stay healthy, or curious. And since library users are not directed to a specific resource with these general themes, we encourage you to guide them to your own library pages and take the opportunity to share multiple resources available to fulfill their research needs. Um, for example, Get Caught Reading can refer to multiple BadgerLink resources such as Novelist and Novelist K8 to find their next read with a recommendation or Teaching Books wide array of resources to supplement classroom reading with a video of an author interview. Um, about a year ago, a librarian in the public library community requested a couple of bookmarks that call out the resources more specifically. So we acquired the Learning Express Library bookmark that you see on the slide and an auto repair source bookmark as well. Based on the feedback from you all in the fields, this may be the direction of promotional materials in the future, especially when directing users from your own platforms and websites. Um, also within the Marketing the Resources section is a link to share your BadgerLink story with us. If you have a success story of using BadgerLink resources with your community users, we definitely want to hear about that and invite you to share so we can in turn share on the BadgerLink website. Um, in addition to promoting BadgerLink resources, we know being comfortable with the resources and using them yourself are the best ways for them to be at top of mind when working with library users. On the For Library Staff page, links to the BadgerLink training page are provided, including asynchronous materials that highlight basic search of many resources, as well as more detailed features and functionality. These videos and info sheets can be used by you to become more familiar and comfortable with the resources, and you can also share these materials with your library users in providing more information to them about BadgerLink resources for when they're outside of the library or doing self-guided research after interacting with you. Um, in 2021, we surveyed library staff and users about the use and relevance of these asynchronous materials available on the For Library Staff page. And we heard um, that asynchronous materials are most useful with scheduled training options being second. Um, therefore, we're, we're working on, you know, um, as with the marketing materials, these training materials continue to evolve based on your feedback um, from the field. So while I didn't have time to speak to everything found on the For Library Staff page today, I encourage you to check it out next time you are looking to promote BadgerLink resources in your libraries and schools. And thank you for doing so and for listening today. Um, you can reach out to us at um, badgerlink at dpi.wi.gov. Thank you so much, Jen. That was really a great overview and information for, <laughs> for Badger Link, which is an amazing resource. So I'm really excited to have you here. I think we should just have you here every few months to talk to us about, uh, about all your work there. Thank you.
Thank you. I appreciate that. <laughs> um, it's a lot to ta to cram into 15 minutes, but hopefully with the recording, folks can um, slow my my talking pace down a little bit. <laughs> but um, well, no, just really <laughs> appreciate it. I really appreciate the opportunity to um, get in front of um, Will's folks, Will's members. Thanks, Jeff. Well, thank you, and and everyone uh, watching, either live or or on tape, please feel free to tape. Listen to me. <laughs> We're dating ourselves. <laughs> this is in the nineties again. Um, uh, oh, do I wish? No. All right. All right. Yeah. Let's let's get back right. on track. Uh, if you're watching a recording or live. Um, please do feel free to reach out to Jen. I mean, you can reach out to us, but we're just going to refer you to Jen. <laughs> You've got Badger Lake questions. Um, so please do feel free to reach out to her. And uh, if you have questions about anything you saw here today, do uh, let us all know. Um, thanks to Jen for joining us from uh, Badger Link. Thanks to everybody else for joining us uh, from our vendor partners. And thanks to you, our viewers, for coming today. Um, we have uh two more taco tuesdays ready to go so uh the next one is going to be december 12th two weeks from today so please join us for taco tuesday and we'll be doing one more one week after that on the 19th and that'll be the end of the year so uh but fear not more taco tuesday will be coming in 2024 so thanks again to everybody who joined us today and have a great afternoon bye